as a special treat for sticking with us for so long, Dwight has his trademark little accessory tease to show. And then uh, let's let's take a look at that if you have it, Dwight. What have we got here? Yeah, I was, you know, I wanted to talk about something and I wanted to share something with you guys. But, you know, I also don't want to add more just noise and clatter to the Internet world. Um, I definitely don't want to be accused of spreading fear, doubt or hate. So, you know, uh, I don't know if we'll talk about it today or some other time, but, you know, just, you know, let's just let's just have some fun. Let's keep everything uh, civil and, uh, you know, see what happens next. Record button didn't want to work. You will work. OK, people, welcome back to another Foosh Weekly. As always, I'm Robo and it seems like a light week. I think I'll go take a nap before we get started. Although, truthfully, we have more to talk about than what we used to talk about on a weekly basis, but it's less than what we've been talking about for the past six months, which has been just sheer craziness. It's nice to have a breather, you know, even though it is 16 items from what, uh, 11 maybe different companies? Maybe we'll wrap this up in 10 minutes, maybe 15, <laughs> maybe 20. I may have a rambling problem because my perfect vision for the weekly is to be quick and concise and give you the information you need to make a decision on which toys you would like to buy. And I say that realizing that I'm now rambling about the weekly in general. Either way, this week's a little bit more laid back. That's just my speed. Blitzway had promised us a full reveal for their Carbotics Voltron in the month of July. And then they did little teases throughout this month and they waited till the last week to give us the full solicitation. But what a glorious action figure this turned out to be. The Voltron Gestalt is big, it's bulky, it's almost 15 inches tall, it weighs almost 5 pounds because of the use of die cast and plastic. The colors are beautiful, the shades, the sheens, it's kind of that semi-gloss that's somewhere in between cartoon and realistic metal. There's cover pieces to make it feel more like a robot form, but those apparently break off and you get lion forms too that fully transform, have their own articulation schemes, just five figures instead of just the one big one, which is usually what Gestalt means, right? I mean, I know we've all messed with a combiner. Plus LED lights stuffed into each lion head. There's all kinds of weapons, both for the big robot mode, for the lions to carry around, to snap into the lions, and those all hide away in the base, which is also, well, besides having the Voltron stand on, you can put the light beam stands, the flight stands for each individual lion and then have them that way although it seems like it'd be kind of front heavy but what do i know but i've been avoiding the big subject on everyone's mind and that is the 700 dollar price point you heard me right 700 dollars. as much as i want this because i don't have a voltron and this would look fantastic in with the rest of my collection 700 dollars is a lot of money that's five waves of marvel legends that's damn near two or three hot toys <laughs> no i'm not trying to talk myself into it i'm trying to talk myself out of it and so far, I haven't clicked that pre-order button, but... But if you're going to pony up for it, it comes out in January, or at least it's scheduled for January. A listing for the Jazzwares Fortnite Legendary Series, what's it called? Double Agent Wildcard Duo Mode 2-pack popped up on Walmart.com either last week or over the weekend. And I'll be damned if not two days later, I walk into one of my backwoods Walmarts and find a stack of them. It's one of those rare cases where Jazzwares does come back and reuse an old body. Wildcard was in series one, which is almost two years now, but the colorways are nice with the golds and the blacks and the whites. Jazzwares only has five more months on their license when it comes to Fortnite six inch figures. So it's weird for them to come out with a new format like two packs, but at the same time, Give them hell, Jazzwares. Make hay while the sun shines. That's what I always say. I, they could have just stopped, you know, and said, oh, well, license is going to someone else. To hell with it. But they are running for that finish line, dropping toys as they go. You came out of the gate swinging with Wave 1 to, again two years ago, and it's been a fun ride since. I'm talking like it's already done, but it's not done. We, we got more. In fact, at that same Walmart, I found Blackheart. Is that the skeleton pirate? Atlantean fish stick and scratch. No build up, no teases. We saw some leaks on Preternia on Twitter and that was it. N no big show, no live streams. We just find stuff and there's something nostalgic about that. But that's not to say that Jazzwares does that with all of their lines. Here's a little glance at the upcoming Halo Infinite 6.5 inch Spartan 
Your Roy? Y'all know that I do not know Halo, but if it's an interesting design, I think I say this every week, if it's an interesting design, I'm going to give it an eyeball. And with this, I wouldn't have even guessed that it was from the Halo universe because of the samurai type aesthetic, but uh, you can't have buy this and put this somewhere else on my shelf. I've managed to avoid the Halo line despite being interested in some of the action figures just for the sake of my own wallet. But this may get me. Like I said, with my blank slate of a mind, I can put this anywhere, in any display, and you hear that? That's the mom, he's doing it again, that I usually hear from Warhammer fans or Fortnite fans. It just, hey, I can do anything I want with these. No! I missed the Mortal Kombat display from Storm Collectibles at the Hong Kong show that went on last week, but they are working on a classic reptile. More ninja, but it's a cool looking ninja, in green, and that's how they pay for bigger figures, because if you look directly to it, or well, you're right, not it's right, there is Kentaro. Now I know Goro, I kinda know Motaro, only because that action figure came out in the past, but when it comes to Kentaro, no idea. But it looks like a big, bulky, four-armed tiger bastard. And put that into action figure form and you've got a winner. But besides the figure itself, it comes with some crazy, like, fatality effects for Sub-Zero. There's dismembered freeze arms that you pull off, then you decapitate the head, and then that splits in half, and then the appropriate blood splatter for each open wound on Sub-Zero. Plus Kentaro hands and Kentaro heads. <laughs> All for $130. That feels worth it for the most part. You feel like you're getting what you pay for. Unlike $700 for a Voltron. And this is scheduled for later this year. Something I had heard about, some chitter chatter on the internet, or from one of the overseas shows, but I never either saved the pictures or, or saw any. But here is promo images for a Ku model 112th scale werewolf. And this one is Jungle Howl Forest Werewolf. And I say this one because we'll get to it, just hold on. But look at this. This thing looks amazing. Why is it not in my collection right now? Love the sculpt, love the proportions, love the paint. I have very limited experience with Ku model. I think Dis Thunder bought one of their samurais and he didn't like it too much. And I think it's over there in a pile, but I, <laughs> I haven't opened it up yet. But looking back, it seems they also did a 1-6 scale werewolf where you start as man and it turns to wolf. This doesn't seem to do that. It's all wolf all the time. But if you don't like the gray fur, there's also the... I'm going to have to do this a lot today because companies just keep putting longer and longer names on stuff. But it, this is the Snowfield Slaughter Bloody White Werewolf. Same details, same shape, just in a lighter color scheme. No info on these yet. They should go up for pre-order soon and I'm ready. I'm, I'm just going to throw my money down and... <laughs> Uh, depending on the price, I guess. In other new pre-order news, we had already talked about the 1000 Toys TOA Heavy Industry Synthetic Female Human. They posted teaser pictures on their socials. Now, there's a full solicitation. And they essentially take the same pictures they already had, add a couple more. Here's the price. Here's when it ships. Order one. But if you've messed with the male version, and I have quite a bit over the past couple of weeks since I saw this, you know this is gonna be amazing. And it's even creepier with the hair. I'm almost more excited about this than I was the male because you can do all kinds of $71 due out in August. Wait, August is next week, isn't it? August is in day after tomorrow, depending on what day you watch this. NECA posted up some progress pictures for Defenders of the Earth Wave 2, giving us a little peek behind the curtain of test shots for Lothar and Mandrake. I like these because they veer away from the reuse that we saw in Wave 1. A reuse isn't bad, but those figures, was the body originally used for their DC Batman and Superman 2-packs or something like that? Is that right? I'm sure somebody will let me know know in the comments. Now don't get me wrong, these fall within the same aesthetic. In fact, I think Lothar may use some of those parts as a base, but then they've sculpted a lot of stuff on top of it. But Mandrake, it's a dude in tux. It requires a whole unique sculpt. So it's a new tooling for both of these figures for the most part. That's why you see repaints of Wave 1 with Flash and Ming and Phantom. That's to pay for these, you know? It's just the progress of a toy line. NECA also had some Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles updates, but is that any surprise? It's a weekly basis at this point. The Turtles in Time Pirate Bebop and Rocksteady 2-pack are on their way to specialty stores right now. At least that's what NECA said. And they specifically said not Target 
and not Walmart. It's funny how, at least in my area back in the day, well, we didn't have a Target until just a few years ago, but Walmart was where I found most of the stuff. Nowadays, you say Walmart, and it's like, oh, Target exclusive? Oh, well, you have to put exclusive on the end of it too, but ah, ah. I feel like I have to wash my mouth out with soap right now. I'm dirty. But think of their video game offerings as fan channel releases. Like, they go to online retailers in your smaller shops like Books A Million and I'm not quite sure if I've seen them anywhere else. Seems kind of a no-brainer for GameStop, right? Swinging back around to Walmart, I know, I know. NECA did say that their 1990 movie Ultimate Casey Jones and the, I, again, I gotta read this, just so many words stuck together. TMNT 2, The Secret of the Ooze, 30th Anniversary Super Shredder European Packaging Homage. Those are on their way to retail too. And yes, they are exclusive to Walmart. <laughs> hey, 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 I don't make the rules here. I'm just the messenger. I just convey information. No, get mad at me. As we talked about on the last weekly, last weekend was MezcoCon, where they did a bunch of reveals, and one of those was the 112th Collective Gotham by Gaslight Joker. From what I've been told, he didn't actually appear in the story this way. I think there was a poster and maybe some, a, a picture somewhere else. Was there a cartoon or something? But this seems to be kind of a mixture of Jack the Ripper and Joker, which my mind, since I haven't read the story, makes perfect sense. Still a nice complimentary piece to their 112th collective Gotham by Gaslight Batman. Two heads, glasses, top hat, optional clothing items, lots of creepy tools, and a suitcase to carry them in. And for some odd reason, my favorite are the hands where he's carved ha ha in the back of them. That's just a neat little detail that I didn't expect. What customers didn't realize at the time, though, is that these were in stock. And from reports I've seen, people receive these the next day and or they got them shipped out got shipping notice they were on hand insane but it also makes sense because this would have been their convention exclusive for the summer where they take it to the shows they sell them over the counter you go home with them love them call them george so not that insane but <laughs> getting this before the gotham by gaslight batman that had on pre-order for a little while eh, kind of insane. On top of that, it did stay up for sale for quite a bit, but it has now since gone to wait list. So if you're interested, jump over there, jump on it. Like I mentioned, MezcoCon over last weekend, which meant some of the reveals happened after the last weekly. But as always, we're swinging back around, taking a look because there's more. Like this 18 inch Godzilla who has some articulation, light up mouth and fins, voice chip from the movies, and just a, just a big old plastic lizard. And I don't even want to guess the price of this, but I doubt it's $700, right, Voldron? Then they showed the 112th Collective Silent Hill 2 Pyramid Head. <laughs> I have no experience with this game. The closest I've been is cosplayers at some cons, but I look at it and it, it always seemed uncomfortable. Hey, let's put a big old angle on my head and try to run around hallways and city streets and stuff. Maybe that's what makes it scarier. Mezco also ran a tournament on their Instagram where they just nonchalantly threw out this Rumble Society Nosferatu and Red Death Doc Nocturnal. You know, just wondering if anybody would notice, and we did. But the big news was this. After years and years of being told, or at least insinuating, that there will never be a 112th Collective DC Robin, they do this. I think a lot of people had just accepted it at this point, so what better time to strike than then? Oh, I guess we'll never get a... Huh? I'm told the R matches up with Damien's design, which is actually who I thought of the first time I put hands on Doc Nocturnal. It's got the size and the, the thinness and the costume, kinda. I mean, with some tweaks, I think I've seen people do customs. But if they're jumping on the Robin train, I hope we get corresponding boy wonders for every Batman they've done. That's a lot of packs. But that'll keep interest going for quite a while. Plus, they can come back and do two packs. Actually, when you think about it from a marketing aspect, holding off on Robin this long and giving us as many Batmans as they have, now they can come around and doot and make more Batmans and more. Mm. But let's not go counting our Robins before they hatch. Let's see what happens. And yes, I thought long and hard about that, and I'm sure it's already been done on the internet somewhere. But. I'm claiming it was me. Listings for Mattel's Masters of the Universe Masterverse Wave 2 leaked a little while back, but this week we got actual looks at the figures themselves. At least in package, which is uh, good enough for me. Beastman is from later in the series. I'm trying to do this without spoiling too much in case you haven't seen it, but Beastman is from later 
which makes me think it's genius because there's two versions of every character depending on the timeline and where it is in the series. Why it's almost as if the concept of Masters of the Universe was made to sell toys in the first place. Am I the first person to realize this? I'm putting it out in the world. Hey everybody! Hey! I cracked the code! Men at Arms jumps back so he's in his orange armor and everything and I'm guessing this uses a lot of the He-Man and now looking at that Wave 1 He-Man and how he wasn't as bulky as we see him in the cartoon. I feel like they've made a body that kind of fits a lot of characters. But at the same time, I don't think anybody was going to gripe if Man at Arms and whoever else used that body was bigger and bulkier. Spycore is this wave's out of left field pick because, well, essentially, if you've seen the series, you know why this is kind of oddball. But at the same time, I'll take any and all characters. I don't care how long they showed up. Doesn't mean he doesn't deserve a figure. Is that right? Did I double negative that? Where am I going? Pinheadedness here is accentuated by the bulkiness of the chest armor. But if you're into this line, that's just one of the aesthetics we're seeing with most of the figures. Then there's Tila, who jumps back to later in the series. So that makes Wave 1, well, mostly their early looks, except for Evil Lynn, and then Tila, who matches up with that Evil Lynn. So this makes sense, but I'd still like to see the more classic version from earlier in the episodes. And where's my Orko? Why, why did the series make me care about Orko so much? $23 a piece set to drop in September. Super 7 started the week with a little tease for their Transformers. Oh, it's been a little bit. Ultimus! La, 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 la. Oh, if you smell what the Robo's cooking. Wave 2. <laughs> I nearly forgot to put that on the end because I got winded doing the other thing. My first thought was, yup, that's a Whopper, all right. But then I realized that Super 7 had already released their lists for Wave 2 and 3, and Hot Rod wasn't to be seen on that. So it's Grimlock. I remember the episode where he got all smart, created the Technobots, had to transform his brain into Computron, but I don't remember the fishing parts, and I guess that was there. But then it loses me again with the apron and the serving tray. I don't know where that's from. Wheelie looks more like an accessory. Doubt there's any articulation down there. Maybe some arms, maybe a head. He's meant to just sit on Grimlock. But he's so cartoon, it hurts. I mean, it's like, oh, my nostalgia bone. Oh, where, where would the nostalgia bone be? I don't know. Bludgeon came slightly after my Transformers heyday as a kid, and, and apparently, me and my brother missed out on the the cool looking ones. I think we had Finback, which is okay, and then Landmine, which is, just looks like a unarticulated dude in a big bulky suit. Not the most exciting picks, but those were wave one. Bludgeon apparently came later. I'm guessing this will be way more fun to play with, with as a fully articulated action figure. And for head options, you can either have Toy, the vintage toy inspired, or the comic book version. Trax is an oddball in my head because he was one of the very rare Transformers as a kid that I preferred in alt mode. There's just something about that car with the wings that would So seeing him in robot mode, and honestly, I don't remember him in any of the episodes. I remember the toy more than the figure, but it's cartoon accurate, right? I mean, it just walked right out of the cells. Plus there's that scale blaster boombox. That's worth the price of admission. He's blasting out at you from Autobot City. On top of all that, it looks like Trax is slightly smaller than the rest. So they are trying to go for some kind of scale here because then you saw Megatron, right? Just, oh, nostalgia bone wherever it may be. Look at all the accessories. That's quickly becoming one of my favorite things. I mean, yeah, accurate figure, but oh, deep pulls on some of these accessories. It's weird that it doesn't come with a toy inspired head like Optimus in case you want to match him up that way. Or they could have done a Marvel Comics with the, the black helmet. I, I, I feel like there may be head packs coming on or pack those in with future Transformers figures. Not shown in the pics is the antimatter chest piece, at least for Megatron's solicitation. If you go over to the group shot, it does show up there. Before we move on, get it off your chest. Non-transforming Transformers, the world is ending. What kind of craziness is this? An affront to humanity itself. $55 a piece due out next summer. Circling back around to Fortnite, Preternia over on Twitter somehow came up with these carded shots of the upcoming Hasbro Victory Royale with Cheese Chaos Agent. I just added the with cheese part because <laughs> that's how I'm gonna make myself remember that it's Victory Royale series. Looking good, the figure itself is mostly following the aesthetic set forth by Jazzwares, so hopefully we can fit them all in together. And from what we know so far, Hasbro doesn't seem to be stepping on their toes or rehashing 
some of, well, most of the figures that we've gotten already. Took me a minute to realize he only has two fingers though. It was wacky and I'm, my brain, oh, what is going on with that? But it seems like the packaging itself may be mock-ups because in two of the pictures, it has different inserts or how the figure is held inside. First off, the weird Transformers thing where it's just a little window and the figure's peeking out. One picture kind of has a cardboard neck brace coming around holding the figure in. On the other picture, there may be a glare of a window and bands to hold the figure. I don't know, either way, I guess we'll find out for sure in five months when Hasbro actually takes over this license. They're kind of... <laughs> hey! This is coming. I know Jazzwares is still selling stuff, but eh. Ghostbusters got a much needed shot in the arm this week with the release of a new Ghostbusters Afterlife trailer. So you know Hasbro jumped all over that. They've been sitting on figures for a year and haven't had much to show since then. So yeah, ah, take them please here. The toy reveals are kind of spoilerish. So if you're wanting to go into the theater clean, skip to the next chapter because yeah, that's what I did. Everything is listed off right along the little timeline across the bottom. Just skip ahead and uh, have a talk long enough for you to actually go because uh, we're not coming back. I mean, we probably all guessed that the original team was gonna show up, but to see them in their jumpsuits, oh, again with the nostalgia bones. I mean, it's essentially the figures we've already gotten, I think for the most part, with new aged heads, but they look really, really good. Well, okay, Ray may be off, but there's something about Ray, much like Mark Hamill and uh, Harrison Ford and some other actors, Sebastian Stan, Chris Evans, who have that face that doesn't seem to translate into plastic form. But they all come with streams. Look at that. <laughs> See, that's not so hard, Hasbro. The kids from the movie all stray away from the reuse path, having unique sculpts for each figure. They're all different sizes, different uniform, different open here, boots out, boots in, short, tall. That podcast figure's got to be tiny, right? We know the size of the original Ghostbusters, and then kids, and then... It seems the six of them will make up the wave to make a Build-A-Ghost Sentinel Terror Dog. It looks cool, but is this a preliminary sculpt? I mean, there's not a lot of action to this action figure. Jaw articulation, shoulder, wrists, maybe neck? But for the most part, it just seems to stand there. Finally, there's Phoebe, who wasn't included in my press materials, but this picture has been floating around showing her over on the end, and I don't know if that's like a super spoiler. They didn't mind showing the big old standing up terror dog or the original Ghostbusters, but Phoebe having that Spangler <laughs> jumpsuit where she's rolled up the sleeves and the pants, yeah. <sighs> I don't know how she'll be released, but the wave is $25 available in the fall. Oh, it's not a weekly without some Marvel Legends action, and the boys had themselves a fan first Wednesday to show us a bunch of new figures. The team jumped right in with the Loki series Sylvie, who we had seen before. We didn't know how she was going to be released. She will be part of this new Marvel Legends Disney Plus What If wave. That brought them around to T'Challa as Star-Lord, and yeah, What If is an animated series. So much like Into the Spider-Verse, we're going to see animated inspired sculpts here, some more than others. I do love the purple addition to the Star-Lord look, though. It just it pops. Nebula looks totally wrong with blonde hair, though, and no cybernetic type things, but totally right at the same time. I'm, I'm looking at this, and it's like, who? Oh, yeah. Wait. No. Yeah. Okay. Wait. Yakface suggested that we could probably use this as a base for a Star Wars Mara Jade custom, and I'm like, damn it. You're right. And... With leftover parts, that hair kind of looks like DC Liberty Bell, right? Hmm. Hey, toys are toys. Robo's gonna play. I think the winner of the wave for me, and we haven't even looked at the rest of them, but uh, spoiler, the winner of the wave for me is Captain Carter. She still has kind of that cartoon look, but it kind of straddles the line where you could use her in an MCU display, I think. And admittedly, I have Into the Spider-Verse Miles and Peter Parker on my MCU shelf anyway, so <laughs> I'm gonna put this in there. I just love this design overall, and I love it even more when it pairs up with another figure we'll talk about in a minute. Doctor Strange Supreme just looks like he's been dipping his toe into the dark magics. Well, okay, maybe more than a toe. The head is fantastic. I love the color palette, as wacky as it may be. Zombie Hunter Spidey is odd, but intriguing. Simply for the fact that it's called Zombie Hunter Spidey. I want to know more. Without the cape, masked head on, it's kind of a mix of MCU and comic book. But then I, I'm just now noticing that the boots are muddy and there may be a blood stain on the side of his leg. So 
But a zombie hunter means he needs something to hunt, and who better than zombie Captain America? Again, cartooniness, but gruesome and ghastly enough to make me want to put it anywhere, because the, the bone showing, the meat, the... I mean, he's decayed all the way through in places. There's actual holes in his legs that you can see the background behind him. For the Build-A-Figure, what better for a What If series than The Watcher? This seems to stray too far away from the design for some people, but to me, it's big head, check, blue robes, check, standing taller than the most of the rest of my figures so he can watch over them, check. I mean, I read a lot of What If issues back in the day and a lot of appearances of Uatu, and it, it, the same basic form was always there, but it, it was changing constantly. So. This will work for me. And even if we do eventually get a comic accurate Uatu, wasn't there more than one watcher? So this can just work behind them. I mean, that's the whole point of having different watchers, different dimensions, different things to watch. But then they brought out the big guns with the deluxe What If series Hydra Stomper, which is essentially a big old Stark armor that's meant to display with Captain Carter. Hasbro even gave it a handhold and some foot spots to have the Captain Carter figure ride on this figure's back. Besides that, military-inspired giant mech? <laughs> Again, I can put that anywhere, even if it's not the Marvel display. I'm jumping out of order from what they showed, but I'm going for everything that's up for pre-order right now, and the next one would be Tigra. Again, we had already seen this before, but with the full reveal, we found out that there's an alternate kind of more calm head. She's packaged on a retro card and is fan channel. As far as future offerings go, Walgreens will be getting binary to fit in with their cosmic theme they have this year. Looking good, but I think the bigger question was, hey, you know, where's the Walgreens exclusive Nova and Quasar, which they did say is on its way, that end of the summer sometime, and then binary is further in the year. Target gets an exclusive redo of the Spider-Man Homecoming Vulture with some new parts, new color scheme, make it a little bit more accurate to the movie. They made sure to point out and then reiterate that that doesn't mean Vulture is showing up in Spider-Man No Way Home or any kind of future MCU multiverse type situation. So you know what that means, right? Vulture confirmed for future MCU stuff. We're also going to be getting a Hasbro Pulse Army Builder Black Hand Ninja with the simple little packaging and you just order it you get it wham bam thank you hasbro and then dwight quickly flashed a control box while throwing around the words fear doubt and hate that pretty much confirms psycho man for a future wave or release of some kind right that would be fantastic and that's it for this week i think i doubt it there even with a lighter week I'm sure I missed something. But if I did, we'll swing back around next week, Monday Foosh Live, the next weekly, whatever. If you're interested in seeing any of these pictures up close without me all, $700, Voltron! I'll be posting all of that along with links to pre-orders, more information on the Foosh front page Saturday at noon. And yeah, I had to dig out my Mandalorian shirt because it seems next week may be a Star Wars Mandalorian top week. I've got the model kits I'm gonna try to build up. It's been a while since I've done a model. It's been even longer since I've done a model video. That's going back to early days of the Foosh YouTube channel. And then it seems like the Metacom Muff X Mandalorian is seeing release finally. I saw HLJ is shipping it. <laughs> so of course I have mine on pre-order at AmiAmi Ami, and they haven't sent me a payment request yet. But hopefully when they do, and DHL being what it is these days, where they just teleport it across the ocean, hopefully I'll have that before the second review session next week. And if not, we'll find something else to talk about. But if you enjoyed this Foosh Weekly, comment, like, subscribe. Much, much love to the plus if you're interested in seeing videos early or in a position to help out the channel, patreon.com. But wherever you may be watching this, I'll always catch you on the Foosh. Yeah, going back to the rambling thing, I used to hate when my friends would call because I would be on the phone forever. And it's like, ah, oh, why do they go on and on? And then I got old enough to realize that I'm the asshole that goes on and on. And now I still don't like getting on the phone because I know I'm the problem and I can't help myself. So my friends know not to even call me. They usually just text because I think they finally realized I'm the problem. I'm from a small Southern town. I don't know how to say goodbye. We just keep on going.